What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I just finished checking out AEW Revolution. Um, and I actually ended up watching it, I want to say, right when I, I guess the... It was probably halfway through the John Moxley, Cesaro, or uh, um, Claudio versus uh, FTR. I had uh, started watching it halfway through that match, and then from there I was, you know, pretty much watching the show uh, for the most part. So I didn't really catch the beginning of it. But the main reason why I wanted to check this show out, obviously, for Sting's last match, and that's why I wanted to dedicate a video strictly talking about that it was a solid show there was some good stuff on there will osprey versus uh Takeshka. uh that was fantastic um damn near uh i guess you could say it would probably be a lot of people's um match of the night um but i actually really enjoyed this sting uh and darby versus the young bucks uh match i really enjoyed this and i think i enjoyed this a little bit more because of just knowing this is Sting's last match. The crowd was hype and electric. And this is wrestling at its hokiness <laughs> right here. This was a nostalgia trip through and through. And they brought all the nostalgia works out there. The Young Bucks come out there getting a whole bunch of hate as they should for the stuff they've done to Sting the past few weeks and uh, attacking his sons and attacking him and and now they want to pull the EVP role and stuff like that. So they're getting good heel heat. Then you had um, Ric Flair come out there. Or uh, Ricky Steamboat come out there. People that has been associated with Sting for so long. You had them come out there. And um, you had Darby come out there. And I like the video package they showed before Sting came out there. Him in his theater watching some of his greatest moments and you can hear the crowd interacting as he's by himself watching some of his greatest moments and even some of the moments he had with Darby Allen Darby Allen and I thought that was cool that was a nice touch and it's like yep this is you know this is it it's showtime for the last time and uh he comes out there um and this was really cool I love what they did they had his son come out there and one of his uh, other type gimmicks and then his other son come out there and win his other gimmicks as well and then he comes out there crowd is amped crowd is hyped and darby goes out there he's straight on business dives through the ropes attack <laughs> attack the young bucks damn near falls through the uh the table that's at ringside and chaos ensues why this is why I say this is one of the most wrestling nostalgia matches you can possibly have because it hits on all the beats of what made Sting Sting. Sting being sometimes no-selling. <laughs> sometimes getting hit with moves and he just no-sell. But people loved it because it was Sting. Him like, getting hyped up. People loved it because it was Sting. You know, him using the bat. And boy, oh boy. They they made it so this was just uh, I think they said it was a Texas tornado match or something like that. So really they just could have said it's just a no rules tag team match for the tag team titles or whatever. And technically it was a four on two match because Sting and his two sons and Darby proceed to beat the hell out of the uh, the Young Bucks and of course people loved it. It was literally a four on two handicap match. But that quickly changed very quickly, uh, super quickly. It became a, a one on two handicap match. We're going to get to that ridiculous spot. Um, but they start bringing out the weapons early. They, they started bringing out the toys. They brought out some tables and then they brought out some glass. And I was like, oh, man, where's uh, where's Jack Perry when you need him? <laughs> they started bringing out some glass. Uh, and started setting them around the ring. They brought out a, a huge ass ladder that they had in the ring, so you knew Darby Allen was gonna jump from it. Why not? Um, they brought out chairs, and y'all know that infamous spot where Darby jumps from the top all the way down to the chairs. Well, um, this time they 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 enhanced it. They made the the spot that more deadlier. They put another sheet of glass 
onto the chair. So I'm knowing, oh, yeah, no one else is taking this bump in this match except Darby, of course. But we were just waiting for it. Um, There was a glass sheet on the side of the, uh, the ring apron, and Sting had his bat. He was about to use it, and he... Um, one of the Bucks, can't even remember the name right now, <laughs> but one of the Bucks moved out the way, right? Sting hits the glass, but it doesn't break on the first time, so he said, fuck it, and hits it anyway, so it breaks on the second time. <laughs> then they chase him through the crowd, and there's some conveniently uh, placed tables on, like, each side of the ramp. So Darby's fighting with one of the Young Bucks. Sting's fighting with the other Young Buck on the other side of the ring. Darby ends up going through the table with the plethora of, of unnamed water bottles just, you know, goes through the table. And then the same thing with Sting. He ends up going through the table. And it's, once again, the fact that Sting has been taking all these bumps, y'all, at the age that he's at is 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 insanity. His, it wasn't it just a couple of weeks ago he took a crazy bump <laughs> off the top of, like, some type of scalping area or something like that. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous they, at the age he's at taking these crazy bumps. So after he took that bump, he was out for the match for a while. Darby was kind of by himself, essentially. But that wasn't going to be, uh, Darby wasn't going to be around for long, bro. So you knew how this spot was going to end for Darby. Darby proceeds to climb up to this huge ladder. One of the Young Bucks is laying on the glass that's, also has chairs under it we've seen this spot before with just the chairs but now they added glass to it and of course um uh, one of the uh, the other young bucks brothers able to move him you know kind of move him at the last minute darby flips off and back just crashes right through the glass uh the, through the glass through the chairs bro just just if you haven't seen the clip I don't even think it would be safe for me to even want try to post on YouTube. Clips on, it's on my Twitter, bro. It's fucking. I, that was a holy shit moment that didn't even need to happen, bro. You want to know what people's going to remember this match about? It's more so Darby trying to kill himself. Legit. He tried to kill himself through the glass spot. And, bruh, his back was just one second they're looking at something else like the carnage and then they cut back and his back is just bleeding out bro like they had to get some officials out there to kind of plug it up to stop it but his back was just bleeding i'm just like huh and now sting out there literally in a 2v1 situation getting packed up the rest of the match and kicking out of everything because Darby Allen, Darby killed himself. Darby Allen killed himself, bro. Why entertainment? Oh my God. <laughs> he killed himself. I don't even know. Like, I just, it makes no sense. But it was a holy shit moment that people will always remember Darby Allen killing himself in Sting's last match. And like I said, it didn't help out Sting because Sting was getting packed up, super kicks, uh, fucking, you know, knees to the face. There was even one part where they did kind of like, if you guys remember when HPK and Ric Flair had their match. And honestly, I wish that was Ric Flair's last match because that was literally one of the greatest retirement matches of all fucking time. And he didn't, he unretired. But on this spot, right before the last super kick, he tells Ric Flair that I love you, and he kicks him, and it ends the match. Beautiful storytelling, right? They do the same thing as Sting is kind of dazed in the middle of the ring. They're about to hit him with the super kick, both of them. And they say, we don't love you. Well, we're not sorry. We don't love you. Because in Shawn Michaels, HBK at the time, he said, I'm sorry. I love you. They decided to say, we're not sorry. We don't love you. And I thought that was a nice touch. That was a nice little callback considering Rick was ringside. Kick him. Kicks out. At one point, he kicked out at one. It was just just ridiculous. Then, uh, all of a sudden, um, they end up putting Sting through another table because 
They end up getting, he was trying to go through, he was trying to, it seemed like Sting was trying to kill himself too, <laughs> go up to the top or middle of the ladder to put one of the uh, bucks through the table, but they end up throwing him through the table. Then they uh, end up, I want to say, um, I forgot what ended up. Oh yeah, they ended up picking up one of the tag titles and they was going to hit uh, Sting while he was down. Ric Flair comes in there. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No. And it's like, fuck you, Ric Flair. And they both super kick him. Um, at one point, Ricky Steamboat tried to stop them. Um, but he ends up getting hit in the chair. This was outside the ring before they went inside the ring. And then for good measures, they end up super kicking him out to make sure Ricky Steamboat don't get in the ring himself. They kicking him, getting whole much, just a lot of heel heat, you know. Uh, they're there to try to help sting out as much as they can they're building up some good heel heat and then once again ultimately <laughs> after all of that sting's still kicking out bro and what like i said at the beginning of this video this was those old school wrestling you know you like the the baby face is just overcoming everything that he really shouldn't be overcoming but it was just a, such a good moment the crowd was so electric and this is why it for me it's I enjoyed this match just a little bit more than the Osprey and Takeshka because one it's just the Sting's last match. I was gonna like I'm I'm I was here for it. That's that's what really sold me on this pay per view in the first place. I wanted to see that match in particular, and it was just fun. This was this was fun, nonsensical but fun. Ultimately, Darby's able to. Rise from the ashes after uh, the medical officials perform surgery on him outside to cover up the bleeding. He pushes off uh, one of the um, the uh, young books off the top because they're trying to hit him with uh, one of their patented moves. I forgot the name of it where it's like it's like one jumps from the top. He has the other one held up over his shoulder and it's like a, he'll end up pile driving him at the same time. It's a cool uh, uh, finishing move, tag team finishing move. But Darby pushes him off, falls through the table, and then Sting finally hits his last, I don't know how true it will be, but as of now, his last Scorpion death drop. And he kind of basked in, like, the, the moment of it. Crowd's going crazy. Boom, hits it for the one, the two, and three. And uh, Darby and Sting retain the AEW Tag Team Championship. Huge pop. That pop was huge. Man, that was a good moment. Good moment. And then afterwards, they decided to talk. You know, Darby said, we got three minutes left. And Sting's talking. He's saying thank you. Interacting with the crowd. It was a good moment. A wholesome moment. Because we knew, you know, this was it for Sting. This is, this is uh, you know, kind of how he wanted to go out in his career. And he went out on top. Got a lot of thank you, Sting Chance, and it was a cool moment. But then, for whatever reason, because AEW doesn't understand the concept of timing, they had to cut the feed. They had to cut the broadcast. Because they ran out of time. They ran out of time. Now, some may think, oh, what we got, what he said was cool. But he obviously, he wasn't done. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it didn't give no final notice like no finality to it it was just like oh well you know what i'm saying we we you know here we're it's about to end now pretty much and then they cut they faded out so they didn't have enough time and i think that's just bad time management because you could have cut some stuff down on this show hell you could have cut that john moxley and claudio versus ftr match down could have shaved 10 minutes off of it. The crowd was damn near quiet majority of it. When I started watching, it was quiet. You could have cut some time off of a few matches if you needed to to give Sting obviously that last match and then to give them a little bit extra cushion in so you don't cut off whatever he has to say because this is his last time. You know, this is this is supposed to be his final match. So give give that wrestler at least uh 10 minutes out there. If that's what you want to do. And I would have did that. So they got to work on their time management. That's that's still an issue. Because the lasting image 
if you don't check social media or whatever, is Sting pretty much getting cut off. That shouldn't be happening. So, but outside of that, I enjoyed this, man. This was this was fun. It was chaotic. It's it makes a lick of no sense. Darby killed himself for no reason, but I enjoyed it because it was Sting's last match, and I'm okay with Sting winning. Uh, I think that was I, I personally think that was the right choice. Um, the only time I would have been okay with Sting losing in his last match if it was against Darby, but I think this was the right choice. It get it got the crowd to go home happy. They paid money to see Sting's last match, and it was it was fun, bro. It was fun, and I think Sting. Uh, yeah, Sting hasn't lost a match <laughs> in AEW, so he he will retire from uh wrestling undefeated, man. I believe his record and he. In, in AEW, he has not lost a match. And I, I think he, you know, going out on top. I know some people say you could have put him over. You didn't need to put him over. Sting losing wasn't going to get them any more heel heat than what they got now. Maybe a little bit more, but I just don't think people are as invested with the Young Bucks. Considering they had an opportunity to really be over with the whole CM Punk feud and what they could have did there. I think people care, but they're not as over as they once were, um, even as heels, it's kind of, it's okay, it's like, eh, it could be better, but that's just my personal opinion on it, I don't think giving them the win there over Sting would have really done nothing in the long, in the grand scheme of things, unless it was Darby, um, but outside of that, the right team won, this was fun, I would suggest, if you want to see Sting's last match, it's worth watching, for sure, go watch it, I think you'll enjoy yourself, it's, it's fun, it's wrestling hokiness at its finest, and it's fun. It's fun. I, I, I can't even take this one too seriously because it's fucking Sting. What are we talking about? Hell, people love The Undertaker's last match, and that was just a cinematic match. And people love that shit. That shit was fucking entertaining. His technically, you know, his last match was against AJ in that cinematic style, and that shit was fun. It was entertaining. So same way here. This was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. And before I end this video, I just want to say I wasn't really well versed in Sting um, during his WCW days, but I knew who he was. I had seen the clips, seen the footage, and the guy is also another face of wrestling. I know people like to think Hulk Hogan and the uh, the Stone Colds of the world, the Randy Savages, the Ric Flairs of the world, the Rocks. You got to put Sting in that category. You got to. He is another face of wrestling. He will always be a face of people who didn't watch the, uh, WCW like that. They knew who Goldberg was. They knew who Sting was. They knew who those guys were. They knew. They knew. And I, I wish he would have got a solid run in WWE before he got injured. But that's all Vince McMahon right there, but we can have another discussion about that at another time. Uh, if you guys want me to talk about the debacle on how Vince and them just fucked over Sting before he got injured. Um, but, uh, man, I'm, I, I can always appreciate someone's career and what they've done for the business and who he is. He is one of the faces of wrestling. And he deserves to be remembered. His career deserves to be remembered and respected. So I had to take time to make this video just to talk about this. This is what I, I wanted to see the pay-per-view for. And I got what I wanted. This is a fun match. It's definitely worth checking out. Comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy Sting's last match? That's all I care about. You, if you want to talk about the rest of the show and what you felt like was the match of the night, you can do that down below. But just specifically to this particular match, did you guys enjoy it? Yes or no? Let me why or why not? Let me know why or why not. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm still here to be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.